Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so I already made three videos. So I've already provided you three examples on how to use McLaurin series to evaluate limits. But I found a couple of interesting problems that I hadn't covered in those videos. So I wanted to make two more examples for now. Um, the first of those is this example four and example five will be next. Okay, cool. So in example four, this is the limit that we have to deal with. And uh, when we try to evaluate the limit as it's written, we get zero over zero. Now, remember, L'Hopital's rule is a way to deal with zero over zero uh, limits, right? Um, so you can use L'Hopital's rule, but here we're going to use Maclaurin series. Uh, in two other videos that I've already made, I show you how to find the Maclaurin series for sine and then for tan inverse, among others. Um, and so the Maclaurin series for sine is this here, and the Maclaurin series for uh, tan inverse is this here. I'll link both of the videos where I show you how to find the Maclaurin series for sine and tan inverse below this video. All right. Anyway, these are the two Maclaurin series. Check out those other videos for the details. Uh, but starting here, we see that our numerator can be written as the difference of two infinite polynomials. Namely, uh, this here can, uh, this infinite polynomial can replace sine x right here, right? And then this infinite polynomial here can uh, replace tan inverse. And these are just like the Maclaurin series for uh, sine x and tan inverse. And I've highlighted the minus sign in between them, which is this minus sign right here. Yeah. OK. That way we don't forget to distribute this minus sign to this second infinite polynomial that represents tan inverse. And of course, our denominator is x cubed. OK, cool. Now, once we distribute that minus sign uh, to this second infinite polynomial that represents tan inverse, all the signs on tan inverse are going to switch, right? The x that was to start uh, positive is going to be minus x, and then minus x cubed over 3 is going to be plus x cubed over 3, and so on, right? Okay, cool. Now, uh, I didn't care to display any more terms of um, the Maclaurin series for sine or tan inverse because, as you'll see, we won't need them. Um, now, if in the numerator we collect like terms, we can write... Uh, sine x minus tan inverse x like this right okay cool um and just keep track of like these guys and um you'll know why i was able to uh, write this in place of it for example x minus x is going to go away and then you have minus x cubed over three factorial which is right here another x cubed term is from the uh, tan inverse mclaurin series and that's x cubed over three so i've put the uh, two x cubed terms next to each other and then x to the fifth uh from sine over 5 factorial and then minus x to the fifth over 5 from tan inverse and so on. Like I said, we don't need to display any more of the terms because look at our denominator. It's only x cubed, right? Because uh, once we divide our numerator, this infinite polynomial sum, um, right, with some negative terms, once we uh, divide it by x cubed, we're going to get this, which is to say that negative x cubed over 3 factorial divided by x cubed will become negative 1 over 3 factorial. And then plus x cubed over 3 divided by x cubed is going to become just 1 over 3, and so on, right? Now, the next guy, x to the fifth over 5 factorial divided by x cubed is going to be x squared over 5 factorial. But remember, we're doing limit as x goes to 0. So an x squared over 5 factorial um, we plug in 0, and so we know that it's going to be 0. And that's why we didn't care to show any more of uh, the terms uh, beyond uh, the x cubed over 3 because all of them are going to have uh, powers of x more than x cubed. And therefore, when we divide by x cubed, each of those terms is going to have an x in them. So when x goes to 0, they're all going to turn to 0. So no point in displaying those. All right, so from what I just said, it's easy to gather that the only survivors will be negative 1 over 3 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial, and 2 over 3 factorial is just a rewriting of 1 over 3, right? Uh, 1 over 3, if I multiply top and bottom by 2, is going to be 2 over 3 times 2, which is same as 3 factorial, and I wanted common denominators, right? Okay, so finalement, simplifying this, we're going to get that our final answer is... Ah, I didn't uh, display that slide, but clearly it's going to be... Uh, 2 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial, which is going to be 1 over 3 factorial, also known as 1 over 6. Yeah? All right, cool. That's the final answer, 1 over 6. But otherwise, I'm done here with example 4. Uh, example 5 to come shortly. Keep watching. Take care.